Growing up in Brooklyn, New York, everyone say New York. There was not a lot of foliage there. I never um, waded through a lot of green grass. But once in a while, walking down the sidewalk, there'd be a crack. And out of it would come something green. Actually, when I came to California, um, when I was 21, I knew nothing about livestock and things. I married a country girl, cattle rancher's daughter. I actually thought that pigs laid eggs. I actually asked that question. I said, do pigs lay eggs? And it was an awkward question that I was certainly embarrassed when I was mocked profusely uh, after asking the question by country people. But watching those blades of grass or whatever they were come through, I actually thought, and again, I, I'm kind of a late bloomer in thinking. I actually thought that's a pretty strong piece of greenage to break that cement and come through it. Maybe some of you actually still think that. I found out later on that actually the cement was broken and then something came through. And that really, I, I believe, personifies what God wants to do. He wants to break up your perceptions of where things are and allow shoots of life to come through from his perspective about where things are. How many think that God has perhaps a greater perspective than you do, okay? How many would like his perspective this year? So the series we're gonna start with is back to life. Back to life, back to, and, and really we're always going back to what God originally intended. He's the author and the finisher of life. He's the beginning and the end. In a sense, we're going back to the garden. The garden was a cool deal, walking with God, no problems, no muss, no fuss. Adam and Eve messed up, generational curse was passed down. All of us have received other things from generations gone by. I know that somewhere in the generations gone by that someone in my past had a large nose. I don't know how that is, I just sense that someone in my past had a fluffy little nose that was passed on to me. And so not only were physical attributes passed on, but other qualities were passed on. And so some of those things are a blessing. Some of those things are less than a blessing. And, and yet, what is God passing on from last year? Is he excited about this year? Yeah, I believe he allows the sun to set on every day because he doesn't want us enamored by how good we think it is, nor discouraged by how bad we think it is. He goes, you know what, let's reboot. Let's just reboot. And this is the statement I've heard IT guys tell me over and over again. When I had computer problems, you know, phone problems, they said, did you reboot? Yeah. <laughs> and that invariably, a reboot would get things back on an even keel. Some of you guys need to reboot your perspective for a new year. Right. You know, uh, a blank canvas, 2015 is a blank canvas on earth, but a beautiful landscape in heaven. That's from God's perspective. Now. We can buy into that or believe that's an overstatement. We can believe that somehow the script written for us, how, let's start here. How many of you believe that you know some people, it just seems the script for their life is amazing? Okay, let's try it again. Let me just try that again. How many of you know some people, it seems the script for their life is amazing? Okay, some of you guys were by faith. Some of you actually were lying. Right there, you were lying. It's okay, you're forgiven. But the truth is, we all can see different people. We wonder, man, it looks like that guy, that woman, looks like she's just blessed. Well, let's level the playing field. God's no respect to a person's. As I love each of my grandchildren equally, I only love my granddaughter more than my other granddaughters because she's my only granddaughter. But as God loves each of us equally, he's prepared a script for us that is equally magnificent. And that takes faith to believe, faith to walk into, faith to trust him for. Now, from God's perspective, the emails haven't been lost. The hard drive hasn't been wiped. From his perspective, heaven has prepared a magnificent year for you. Turn to the person next to you and say, next year, this year is going to be my best year ever. Just say it by faith. Say it by faith. Don't twitch when you say it. Take out your phones. Take out your phones. Uh, we're going to vote now. Again, we almost have 1,800 people that have signed up. Uh, let's take out your 
uh, phone and plug into your Rock app, if you would. We're going to give, we've decided to give a free Maui vacation to the, the one millionth person to get the Rock app, to the one millionth person to get the Rock app. So not long now, just hang in there. So here's the question. Do you believe 2015 is going to be a great year for you? Now, just think about it. Take your app out. Okay, think about it. Okay, it's an important question. Okay, you're about to vote on your year. I've done my best to tee the ball up. Okay, I've done my best to paint as rosy a picture as possible about the truth. But it's your life. And how you vote now is going to affect your year. Because I believe this. You have as much effect on your year as God does. And your veto, like the Security Council, your veto, that's an Italian name, veto, <laughs> your veto can affect how your year turns out. So again, I'm doing the best I can. I, 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 could, I could come down there and vote, take the phone out of your hand and vote for you. And I want to do that. But I want to try, I'm hoping, you can vote yourself. So let's vote now. Vote now. Do you believe 2015 is going to be a great year for you? Vote yes or no. Is the app working? Yes. Okay. There it is. Come on now. Just pray for Susie. She, she. This is good. We just, I want to see some more movement on that. Okay. I guess there's no movement if everyone's doing yes. Is that what's happening? I assume it is. I guess there'd only be movement if someone was doing no, right? Because you can't go higher than 99%. Even I picked that up right there. I'm a little slow. Because when you have more than two questions, then you see more movement. But right now, it looks like no one's voting anymore. But actually, there are thousands of people. Well, maybe hundreds, maybe dozens, teens of people voting. So this is really, give God a hand, 99. Come on. That's an awesome thing. So my, here's my conviction about this year, okay? Um, if God is excited about this year and we're his sons and daughters, then we should be excited as well. Because you don't know more than God. So why don't we begin to believe from the very get-go that God's perspective of your life is better than your perspective of your life. Because God knows stuff about each of our lives that we don't know. So I believe God wants to place at least a glimmer. I understand. Let me just say, I'm not knocking the fact that a lot of you get beat up, chewed up, spit up, stepped on. All that happens in life. Is there anyone here who has not been beat up, chewed up, and stepped on? Would you please stand up? We want to do that to you. We want to impart that to you. <laughs> Everyone in life goes through that, guys. Okay, so that's the human experience. But the value of following Jesus, the one who knows the future, is he wants to give us insights toward the future that we can place our hope in, our faith in, and then see those things come to pass. So I believe that God wants to prepare us for what's ahead. Look what the Bible says in the book of Amos. Some of you guys didn't even know what that book existed, okay? But Amos chapter 3 verse 7 says, The sovereign Lord does nothing, doesn't do anything, until he reveals his plans to his servants, the prophets. Now, at one point, there were prophets, and there still are prophets today. But the Bible says we all can prophesy. And so even tonight, you can prophesy about your life and being able to hear his voice. My sheep hear my voice. God wants to show you, I believe, something tonight about your future that's going to inspire you. We should not be the last people to figure out what's going on. I believe that God wants to show you about your life even today what he wants you to believe for. Now, in the Old Testament, there was a group called the Sons of Issachar who were intuitive, and they figured things out. First Chronicles 12, 32, it says the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders of this tribe with their relatives. All these men understood the signs of the times and knew the best course for Israel to take. I believe that they were, in a sense, entrepreneurs, they were risk takers. They were willing to go ahead of the crowd. We are called, I believe, to be spiritual entrepreneurs. That's my message, being a spiritual entrepreneur. If we're going to be what we've never been before and do what we've never done before, then we have to be entrepreneurs. What does that mean? A spiritual entrepreneur is a person 
who takes greater than normal risks in order to fulfill the will of God for his or her life. There's a missionary in the room. I don't want to embarrass him, but uh, he goes into nations that are close. He risks his life. He's wanting to get into the nation of Iran right now to preach the gospel. It may cost him everything to do that, but he's an entrepreneur. He's a spiritual entrepreneur. Would you like to know something that it takes many people at almost a century to discern? I'm going to tell you something that it takes almost 100 years for people to find this out. 50 people 95 years and older were asked, if you had to live your life all over again, what would you do differently? Wouldn't that be nice to know what people who have lived 100 years would redo, would reboot a new perspective? They said this. One of the primary responses was, I would take more risks. I would take more risks. How revealing. Not surprising, though. If God is pleased by our faith, if without faith it's impossible to please God, then obviously God's a risk taker, and he's asking us to take risks. We walk by faith, not by sight. Now, some of you are saying, I'm still recovering from the last risks I've taken. Let me give you a hint about risks. I am still recovering. I've been recovering from risks that I've been taking. I'm always in recovery about risks I'm taking. But that does not stop me from taking further risks. That's a part of the Christian life. It, you know, it's the person who had the one talent who buried it. Remember? Cast him into outer darkness. There'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But the person who had two multiplied. The person who had five talents multiplied it. So it takes faith to take what you have and sow it. Every time a, a farmer plants a seed, he's taking what's in his hand and he plants it in the ground, believing for something better. If you eat your seed, you're a bird. If you want to have a harvest, you've got to plant your seed. You can't eat your seed. You can't go, oh, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to eat my seed. That's why sowing, giving your finances to God. We learned that as baby Christians, and we did it with next to nothing. Today, we wrote a check <laughs> to bless someone. And our comment to one another was, we don't have it, but we're going to sow it. It's going to cost part of our future to obey the Holy Spirit. If you're not living like that, that's called the Christian life. <laughs> to obey the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, and again, we had to be in agreement about it because it, it cost us something. But to say, you know what? We believe it's the right thing to do. And when we're in agreement, then we're going to obey the Holy Spirit. And we have seen him be faithful now in almost 40 years of marriage. So that's it. So I am always in recover from, recovery from the risks I'm taking. I'm in recovery, and yet God says, get back in the battlefield. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking initiative. What does that mean? Initiative is defined as the aptitude to introduce energy and change, to overcome static inertia. This little amorphous little, I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure hey, if I'm going to trust God this year or not. I'm not sure it's going to be good. You know, last year was hard, and I'm not sure in order to act first prior to group momentum. Forget the crowd. The crowd's been wrong forever. Don't follow the crowd. Follow the head of the crowd. Follow the leader of the pack. Follow the God of the universe. Follow the Holy Spirit. Because I, I, I want to follow him. I want my life to be a life that is willing to introduce change, to overcome the static inertia. Now, if you say, well, it's a hard season right now, well, that already means you're, you're somewhat prophetic. It's really difficult. Man, you are just on a roll. It's just so hard right now. <laughs> wow, you, you have like a prophetic ministry. The fact that it's difficult right now is obvious. Is it, is it at anyone here find your life is not difficult? Seriously. Just, just let us know. Wave a hand. Life is hard. And this is a particularly hard season on the planet. It is, it is actually dialing up to be a harder season. Can you sense that? It's hard. But God's not done. 
and what that's meant to do. And again, a lot of us, when the recession happened, you know, I was chanting, if you will, now we're not going to have to feed on the things we see and experience. We're going to begin to walk more by faith. And I was hoping that would catch on. Uh, but candidly, I saw a lot of people, you know, grumpy stepped in. And a lot of folks, as they, and I understand losing house, jobs, I understand it's a hard thing. But we've got to wade through that and realize God's bigger than our job or our house or what we see. He's allowing things to be stripped away. You know, we visited uh, two folks in the hospital today. One, one of them is a young boy, a relative, who has leukemia, who's already lost a leg, who's fighting to spend Christmas in the hospital. Been there and will be there for months, fighting for his life. And we walked away, you know, loving on him and our niece, who's his mom, and, and saying, Lord, we are, we are blessed. Visit another young lady, Shauna. Some of you guys know Shauna, fresh young lady. Serious back operation, her mom, Lisa, and visited her and uh, just very, you know, challenging life. Talking about the operations that are ahead, the things that need to take place. And once again, going, wow. You know, all of us can be shown other options for what is presently taking place in your life. And all of a sudden, you'll be making rather merry with what's taking place in your life. So my appeal to you would be, as it always could be harder and worse, that you begin to thank God for what you have. Thank God for what you have. You've not been cheated. You're a blessed person. And right now, right before you, is a meal God has allowed to come your way. That if you eat it with a merry heart, take your meds, and rejoice evermore, as the Bible says, and in everything give thanks, it's going to work for your good. So that's God's promise. So what does the creator of the universe want you to initiate in 2015? Well, I, I'm a guy. One of my uh, gifts, I guess, is as a futurist. I, that's something I, I did. started a ministry in 1989 called 21st Century Ministries. So I've always been kind of looking ahead. And so when I, my wife, and she felt it was prophetic, she picked up a magazine that had the innovations that have come out in the last few years that have been the most profound. And that got my attention. I looked at it, and I began to see the spiritual counterpart, and I picked out seven innovations that have spiritual counterparts. And a lot of you would like to have invented those innovations to make the billions of dollars the founders did. But uh, if you catch on to the spiritual counterpart, then the value of the innovation can last forever, and not just uh, materially on this earth. So here's a video about one of those inventions. That's, um, I believe, I took this video uh, today. It's a video that I shot. Uh, I got some Christmas toys and shot a video. And so we're going to get that up for you. And here it goes. It was scary. I was surfing for a while. Susie and I went to Hawaii on Christmas and I was surfing. And then I went, I got a kayak, and I was going down these rapids. It was cool, cool experience. But the best was when I, when I skied off a mountain, and it was so scary because there was an avalanche right there that missed me, but I, I was able to survive it. Very, very cool. God protected me. And here I am skydiving for Jesus. But I hadn't rode a bicycle in a while, but it just came back. It's like riding a bicycle. It just came back. There it is. All right, there it is. So, so that one-minute video was shot on a GoPro camera. It's a high-definition personal camera that enables you to capture point-of-view footage. So you're literally what you see is being captured. So I just thought that, man, that sounds like spirit-led living to me. I don't know about you guys. It's seeing 
and appreciating your life. Here's a, one of the early GoPro models. It was alpha tested. It was rather cumbersome, but they worked on the model. That was a heavy battery that threw the guys back out for a while there. But their motto is, why buy a GoPro hero if you think your life's a zero? And that's their motto. I made that up. But anyway, it just sounds, I have a hip hop album coming out in February that you guys can... So here's the initiative. Number one, 2015 initiative. Your life is meant to be an exciting adventure. Seeing as you go. <clears throat> here's what I believe with all my heart. I believe God is doing things every day in our lives. That if we can see our life from his perspective, then we're going to be excited about our lives. The only reason why you're not excited about your life is because you're not seeing your life as God sees your life. You just nodded your head, didn't you, Gabriella? That was beautiful. Thank you for doing that. Let me say that. When I see Gabriella in the front row here as a, as a grandfather, my heart, it's the, it's the King James leapeth. My heart leapeth. Now, if I as a natural father have that experience, how much more does our heavenly father have that experience about us? His heart leapeth. You may think your life sucketh, but his life... <laughs> He thinks your, your life is, is magnificent. That's his perspective. So every moment of every day is an adventure. Not one second of your life has ever been a repeat. You know, God has a zero redundancy conviction into zero boredom. You know, one of the early mantras from The Rock was, if it's boring, it's probably not of God. And that to me was a a filter. If it's boring, it's probably, I'm not seeing, if my life is boring, the God of the universe, the God who makes galaxies is not bored. The God who makes babies and dimples and beautiful, funny looking fish at the bottom of the sea that they didn't even know existed till recently. That God is not, you know, a drab dude or a dreary dud. He's an exciting, wonderful father. And we are creating his image and likeness. Now, GoPro goes back thousands of years. Here, again, is some early pictures. That's the original GoPro right there on the left. Deuteronomy said this, these words I command you, you shall, they shall be on your heart. And then New Living Translation, tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. I want to see my life through the word of God. When you see me next time, I'm going to have duct tape with my Bible strapped to my head. Susie's shaking her head. She's laughing at me right now. <laughs> anyway, the point is, I want to see my life through the eternal word of God. Heaven and earth will pass away. My word will remain forever. Well, let me give you a hint. The only Bible that's helping you is the Bible you know. It's not a magic book. You can't like put it on a coffee table. Going, Look at that. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. So I have to wash my mind with the word of God. And, and so what I have found, I mean, do you know that there's incredible, there's apps for these things online. You can just go get the Bible online. Come on, get the Bible. You get the Bible and the Bible can be playing for you right now. Come on, I was going my, right there. The Bible, don't mess up right now. Done. There it is. I had my Bible playlist. There it is. I had it right there because I was playing the Bible today. Here, here it is. Ready for this. I recorded those flutes today, those horns. Hovering over its surface. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that it was... Come on, can you feel that? Are your meds kicking in right now? God called the light day and the darkness... I, I press play on this Heaven all the time. And they have better speakers said, than rotary phones. You notice that? They're better speakers the than rotary water phones. From water. And so it was. Okay, the point is, you who have been blessed with the most magnificent mediums to connect you to the word of God. 
and yet simultaneously have more distractions inundating you to make you be enamored by lesser things, need to press play on eternity and less play on the temporary. What are those things on the guy's head? They're called teflon. They're called phylacteries. They're a set, a small black box containing scrolls of parchment that had the Torah, the first five books in the Old Testament. And so obviously, it's, it looks a little eccentric there. But, but I, the principle is that they wanted the Word of God written on their hearts. And I believe God wants us to see. Romans 8.14 says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. I love the message paraphrase of that. It says, God's spirit beckons. There are things to do and places to go. Where are we going to go to, God, this year? I'm excited. You know, let me say this. <clears throat> if I were to say to you, I've had a very hard season recently, so what? <laughs> All I would want to do is say, I've had a very hard season, but perhaps that might produce empathy in your heart. But maybe you'll be able to say, so have I. Well, then my conviction for you is, even though we have had a hard season, are you still praising and trusting God? Are you still saying, God, I am believing for great things that are ahead because you have promised them to me? So here's number two initiative. What God has provided for you is enough. This is a, a company called Uber. Actually, the, the guy wanted to call it Goober, but his son said, Dad, don't call it Goober. I made that up, but it just sounded like... Don't laugh at the company. Thank you, Bob, for laughing at that. That's an $18 billion company. And they say right now it could go to $40 billion this year. Uber. It's a goofy name. But what someone did, well, someone said, you know what? Someone said... I have a phone, and I have a GPS, I can be a taxi. And I can let other people be taxis. They can use their own car and their own phone. Someone saw something that was right in front of them, and he said, this can make me a wealthy man and provide employment for some and unemployment for taxi drivers. But employment, <laughs> I saw Cindy's phone. And if you go back to that slide today, Cindy had a phone and it had a picture. It should be the first slide there. It had a picture. If we could get that, I would love to see that. No, not that one. It's the picture. There it is. Now, I just, in the booth before the service, I saw her phone and it, it had this on the back of her phone. I refused to sync. And I thought to myself, I already know all the things you can do with phone covers. And then someone said, no, you don't. You have no idea what could be done with phone covers. And someone said, as a matter of fact, I want to make a whole series of phone covers. And it reminded me of the message, it reminded me of my year, it reminded me of the year God wants you to have. Not only does it speak to God refusing you to sink, but he wants you to think outside the box. What is something that's right in front of you? that perhaps you're not seeing its value. Someone did, founded a company named Uber. $18 billion company. Go to the next slide, if you would. Uh, the Uber, the, it said, Jesus said, when someone has given, been given much, much will be required in return. How many of you think if you stand before God and you're gonna say, God, you didn't give me that much? How many wanna say that before God? How many wanna present that case? And when someone has been entrusted with much, even more will be required. Now, all of us have been given much. Now, perhaps because I was suicidal, do I appreciate life? I appreciate life. I was listening to Charles Stanley had a message tonight on suicide. Older man of God, seasoned sage in Atlanta. And he was imploring, I don't know if, I, I kind of caught the middle of it, but he was imploring people. Because I know what happens, you know, end of the year, beginning of the year, we heard um, there's a man who owns a bike company in Lake Tahoe. Uh, we would go by there. We even rented some bikes 100 yards from where um, we stayed with our friends who live up there. He committed suicide. And uh, just recently, the last few weeks, I think it's sad. Who can, how, and I understand that. I understand that. But to stop believing that lie, 
you know, and maybe in your mind, when you think about this year, I know we had 99% who voted, but I guarantee you there's folks in the room you didn't vote because you didn't want to press no. But in your heart, you were saying no. I understand that. My appeal to you would be, have a comparable assessment to your life, to God's assessment. Accept that you have a tweaked perspective. I accept that every day. Every time I get up and get in God's word, I accept that I'm about to hear and read different things that are different. My thoughts, God's already given me, you know, my thoughts are not your thoughts. As a matter of fact, my ways are not your ways. As far as the heavens are above the earth, so are my thoughts, he says, above your thoughts. So I don't look at the word of God or receive the word of God to get confirmations to what I'm thinking. I get adjustments to what I'm thinking. And my, that's my appeal to you. Let the word of God be that source of life for you this year. So focus on what you have, not what you don't. I, I really believe this. If we can't appreciate what we have, you will not appreciate what's coming next. It's impossible for a person to appreciate what's coming next. Wisdom, the Bible says, is right in front of the person with understanding. But the eyes of the fool are on the ends of the earth. Do you know that the very purpose of advertising is to make you dissatisfied with what you have? What you have is so lame. Get a new car. You kind of you can't afford it, but just you can make payments forever. <laughs> the purpose of advertising is to say, I know you don't need it. You'll never have an advertiser say, you know what? You don't need this product. Save your money. You're already up to your eyeballs in debt. Just enjoy what you have. You'll never see that commercial on TV. Because they make money by making us dissatisfied. And I want to be satisfied with who I am and what I have. Philippians says, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We have found in faith the value of older people. I married Susie. She was seven years old. She's just a spring chicken now even. But the value of older people is that we have seen much. We have seen the faithfulness of God with that verse. Amen. Thanks for that confirmation. Number three, only God can provide eternal vision, power, and community. Well, someone said, you know what? Everyone's dropping their iPhones and they're breaking, so I'm going to found a company called iDropped.com that inexpensively can replace the front of your phone. Now, the three reasons that people need their phone repaired are the very next slide. They fix the brokenness of screens. We mentioned that, which is to me lack of personal vision, what you see. They fix dead batteries. To me, it's like lack of power. And number three, they fix the dock connector, which is lack of community. These are three dimensions that fit each one of our lives. This year, you know, Jesus said he would come for the brokenhearted, for the broken vision, the broken power, the broken relationships. He's coming for that in your life. So someone got that vision and said, you know what? I'm going to get power and vision and community. I thought that would be a perfect thing for us to do for each one of our lives as well. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Jesus said, because he has anointed me. And now he's anointed you to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, the broken vision, the broken power, the broken relationships. How many of you guys heard Ryan Murphy last weekend? Ryan the Stud Murphy. Give God a hand for Ryan. 20 years old, knocked it out of the park, and he talked about community. The next generation who know Jesus are finding community relationally connected. I need relationship. You need relationship. Find that for yourself. Number four, exciting graphene. Have you ever heard of graphene? I had never heard of it. Graphene is stronger than a diamond. There's 130,000 patents right now on graphene. Lighter than steel, lighter than paper, razor thin, virtually transparent, 
more flexible than a contortionist or a cartoonist. If you are, when I look at that word, it looks like a cartoonist, but it, they're flexible too. If you be a cartoonist, it takes great flexibility. So have, have you, how, who's never heard of graphene like me? Never heard of it. But think, and, and again, 130,000 patents, graphene is part of the future. And again, what an incredible principle, something that is strong, light, razor thin, virtually transparent, and flexible. Sounds like a great Christian life, doesn't it? I want to be, I want to be like that. So here's the initiative, live a transparent and flexible life. Live a transparent and flexible life. When I get up to share publicly, privately, I don't try and become a different person. I understand. I could, I could look at Charles Stanley and try and do a Charles Stanley. I can't do Charles Stanley. I can barely do me. I can barely do me. So God doesn't say, find someone to imitate. He says, be you. Be who you are. You got a quirky personality. That's awesome. It's just like I made it. I made you to be you. This year, why don't you be you? Turn to the person next to you and say, this year, why don't you just be you? Transparent, flexible. Look what Jesus said here. He said, no one. How many people? Jesus said, no one. How many people? No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but a lampstand. Those who come, you know, someone lights the lamp and then hides it. That's silly. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, and that means in the original Greek language, clear, properly folded together. You're seeing what you should. When you're seeing what you should for 2015, then your whole body will be full of light. How many think that God brought you here tonight? How many think you should be at Starbucks right now? How many think that if God brought you here tonight, he's trying to communicate something to you about your year? How many are resisting him the entire time tonight? <laughs> Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light, lustrous, bright, transparent, and well illuminated. You know, I sometimes think, you know, how did Billy Graham treat his wife? And I just can't be Billy Graham. <laughs> I know there are different things that, my, our, the way we are funny with one another. I know Billy Graham did not yuck it up with Ruth. <laughs> I just don't think that, I don't think that was his temperament. You think he was, honey? Yeah. Maybe, okay, anyway, we don't know. <laughs> Check out those videos in heaven, okay. But when your eye is bad, everyone say bad. Bad, bad. no. Hurtful. Your body also is full of darkness, opaque and impervious to light, so that images cannot be seen through it. How many of you want nothing to be seen through you? How many of you are holding your cards in life like this? And how many of you are saying, this is who I am. This is what I've done. I'm turning myself in. I don't want to be caught. I'm turning myself in. I'm a sinner in need of a savior. You know, that's the Christian. I, I had to see a transparent leader in the mid 80s, sharing his guts before I thought it was allowable. Because candidly, the leaders in the 70s had a lot of smoke and mirrors. Those around me were like, you know, we're good, we're doing great, we're doing awesome, and we knew it wasn't the case. And we thought, maybe that's the way you gotta hold your cards. But when someone said, you know what? This is really where I am. Now, <laughs> I'm not saying, you know, anyone wants to hear all of our dirty laundry. Havila is very funny. Um, she was here this week, and she told a very funny story about someone who had come to lead worship years ago at Bethel. And um, <laughs> when they began to lead worship, they were really going through it. And, and their, their opening line was, my life sucks. <laughs> and that's really not how to get a meeting off the ground. <laughs> but there was an older, more mature worship leader on the stage, well-known guy, who followed up right after that with this line, but it's not gonna suck forever. <laughs> and he pulled it out. 
I thought that was a great, we roared on that one. My life sucks, but it's not gonna suck forever. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, so let me summarize these verses. When your vision is clear, then your life will be in order, fully transparent, bright, illuminated for others to see. But when your vision is blurred by hurt, all of us get hurt, then your life is opaque, impervious to light, so that others cannot see the person God intended you to be. You can't see the person God intended you to be. Another invention. This is called, um, th this is skio. It's a molecular sensor invented by an Israeli company, startup, scans any item's molecular footprint. And so it will answer the question, which watermelon is sweeter? When is an avocado going to be ripe? How many carbs are in my shake? How hydrated are my plants? All the women go, ooh. <laughs> That's exciting. I mean, I'm excited about that. So what's the principle? Principle number five, spiritually discern every situation. You need discernment. You know, the internet is like snorkeling in a septic tank. Do you know that? There's some crazy people there. You can get, you can get one of the sickest people who ever lived in your child's bedroom in five minutes. I hope you have safety nets on your internet. Okay. Hebrews 5 said this, but solid food, spiritual food, is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Now again, the planet is changing. You know, the whole moral system is changing, and so what used to be evil is now good. What used to be right is now wrong. What is wrong is right. Everything is like upside down. And so you've got to discern through the eternal word of God what is right, what is wrong, what is true, what is false, what is ultimately God's will, what is not, what's good, what is evil. And the greatest goal the devil has is to marry good and evil. Thank God good will prevail and evil will be done away with. Number six, here is something McDonald's is starting. 60-second drive through meal. You phone it in, and as you drive by, they throw it into your window. <laughs> Not quite, but seriously. In 425 stores, they're experimenting. If after you order it, you don't have it in your hand in 60 seconds, your next meal is free. There's an experiment. Now, I just thought, once again, I looked at that, I thought, man... Just 60 seconds to get a meal. How much time? And, and that's, for me, that's why I used to think, well, I don't have like an hour. Well, do you have a minute? Seriously. I mean, in this day and age, if I got junk in the trunk, then one minute can help me. <laughs> I, one minute can get me a little chiropractic adjustment you know, can get me back on my wife's laugh. I love when you laugh, Susie. That's so cute. <laughs> Thank you for laughing. I, I have the wrong device here. Thank you for laughing. <laughs> so, I see this as feeding on God all day. Come on. And let me confess it to you. I am not healthy enough to not feed on the Word of God all day. I'm not. Not stable enough. Nope. You can say my pastor is the most unstable person I've ever seen. You can say that. Consequently, he needs the word of God and a great stable wife and a beautiful granddaughter to encourage him at all times. So one thing we're doing, and again, I, I'm, I'm just trying to say, what do I have, Lord? What do I have? What have you given me? You know, I'm always amazed I'm on Caleb. What am I doing on Caleb? It's ridiculous. It's got to be a mistake. Somewhere, somebody messed up. But it's a privilege to speak to millions of people. There's 20 million people listening to Caleb across the country. Get emails, texting, boom. So I'm trying to mine, and only that gives me encouragement. Well, maybe God has given me something I could say using the gifts I have. So we are renovating, and we're just about done. 
Um, I'm doing a one-minute devotional, a video devotional. And thank you for reminding me. Also on the phone. It'll be on phones. As well as having a new Facebook public page. We've been over 5,000, at 5,000. Can't go any bigger than that. And so I hired these children to sit with me for a picture. And so we're coming out with a Facebook public page shortly. I'll let you know. Sign up for that. That'd be a blessing. Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Someone come to a keyboard, if you would, please. Final, we've had six incredible innovations that are wonderful. Let me give you one caution. Big caution. Big caution. It took months to build this church. It would take, I think, minutes, hours to burn it down. It takes years, decades to build a life. It can take a minute to lose it. So here's the next slide. It takes years to build a safe and healthy life, but seconds to tear it down. Snapchat, founded by a 24-year-old. Snapchat's mobile app enables users to capture photos called snaps and video clips with a smartphone, overlay text, and transmit the image to friends. Its content is available, though, from anywhere from 1 to 10 seconds. So for 10 seconds, you can go to hell, 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 gone. Okay. And we're thinking, well, I can do whatever I want for 10 seconds. Say whatever I want. 700 million photos are shared every day on Snapchat. They were offered for the company $3 billion in 2013. In 2014, it was valued at $10 billion. Snapchat is all about the now, which explains why the average Snapchat user checks his account 14 times a day. So next slide. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. I don't want to make my life a have to. My life's a get to. She doesn't have to love me. She gets to. <laughs> I actually wanted to say the opposite, but somehow it came out. Next slide. That picture you took on Snapchat may be around a lot longer than 10 seconds. If North Korea gets a hold of it. What is done in secret will be shouted from the housetops, Jesus said. First Corinthians says, I am not, I am allowed to do anything. Yeah. But not everything is good for you. You say, I'm allowed to do anything. But not everything is beneficial. All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient, the New King James Bible says. And so, here's a summary of the initiatives. See your life. One, as God intended, an exciting adventure. See your life as an exciting adventure. Think, no one can see your life for you. The only person who knows what your life should be is God. So see your life from God's perspective. Hello, Barbara. I love you, dear. Good to see you. I see you. Number two, what God has provided for you is enough. It's right in front of you. You have it in front of you. You don't need a different life. You need a different perspective on your life. He's not trying to change your circumstances. He's trying to change your response to your circumstances. You start responding differently to your, your circumstances, and your whole perspective will change. Number three, only God can provide eternal vision, eternal power, and eternal community. And then live a transparent, flexible life. You know, as you get older, it is harder to be flexible. But it's so important. I don't want to be a rigid guy. I don't want to be this old fuddy-duddy, this guy who, you know, I love Brett leading worship. You know, let me say this. I know that some of you who may be older, you know, you're thinking, I want to just, I want to know all the songs. I want to know where he's going. I want to follow the bouncing ball. And that's, that's okay. 
I think is that there's a spontaneity in the next generation that is just kind of flowing and really allowing worship to be a dance. And just, I love how Brett led tonight. I love that. And I want to be, I want to be responding to the next generation instead of going, man, you know, I wish we, we were singing today. Susie and I were singing some songs <laughs> that were really horrible from the 1970s. And we thought people, people who didn't even have a gift in writing songs were writing songs in the 1970s. That's what I want to say about that. Number four. <laughs> Number five, spiritually discern every situation. It's a minefield. You're walking in a minefield. What you see, who you're with, evil companions will corrupt good morals. Whether you know them or you just are enamored by them on the online, they will corrupt you. Number six, feed on God all day, every day. And lastly, Let's all stand together. It takes years to build a safe and healthy life, but seconds to tear it down. I'm going to ask you to vote. How many of you believe that this year is going to be a great year? Would you lift your hand to God, okay? Father, we thank you, Lord, that the script you've written for each one of us is a perfect script. It needs no revisions. It doesn't have to be adjusted, Lord. The only adjustment is in our perspective. We want to see our lives the way you intended. We want to see even the challenges in life from your perspective. You promise us in your word that all things, absolutely everything will work together for our good. Make us the person you want us to be. If we respond well, if we love you and are committed to your purpose. And so Lord, today we say we love you. We trust you. Tonight, someone came in with an in and out cup. And I said to the young guy, do you see what's on the bottom? And there was a verse in the bottom. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. My GoPro camera saw it. My eyes saw it. And it quickened me once again. The truth of God. That trust him with all my heart. In all my ways. Commit all my ways to him and he will establish 2015. So I want, to, I want to pray with you. If you believe in what was said tonight and you want to pray this prayer, I'm going to lead you in a prayer just so we're in agreement. And um, then you can pray in your own words as well. But would you pray with me out loud? Heavenly Father, you are trustworthy. You are a good God. I have seen your faithfulness in my life. So I trust you for this year. I do not trust my perspective, but I trust you and your will for my life. Open my eyes to see my life the way you intended. I trust you for a great future, and consequently, I put my hope in you. Lord, I thank you that you came to earth to live and die in our place, taking the punishment for my sins, and then rising from the dead, conquering your circumstances so that I can conquer my circumstances and live resurrection life. I bless you tonight. I bless you for this year. I thank you in advance for it. It's going to be a great year because you have planned it for me and you do all things well in Jesus name. Amen. Give God a hand. Amen.